This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. It's finally here. Week zero in college football, setting off what should be the most delightful season we've had in a very long time with a 12-team playoff lurking around the corner. Let's get it all popping for today by talking about the best bets across week zero and some futures to snag before the season gets underway by talking to Austin Swayman, picking his brain on what bets he likes at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is Covering the Spread, a FanDuel research podcast. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor for FanDuel Research, joined here as mentioned by Austin Swain. You can find him on X at Swain 3 Find all of his work over at FanDuel Research, where he is a senior editor. Austin, happy week zero to you. How are you doing today? You smell that, Jim? It smells like football is finally in the air. Like you said, I, maybe it feels different. Like I've been playing a ton of college football 25. I feel like the lead up to this college football season has been a little different than, than in seasons past. So I'm so excited and ready to go, even though this weekend slate of games is not like overwhelmingly great. Any competitive real football that counts works for me. Who is your team in college football 25? Uh, so I have rebuilt two lanes since NCAA football 12. I took them again. They're like an easier rebuild now that they've been kind of good than yeah. when I used to do it back in the day. So, but they have cool uniforms, good stadium. <laughs> like I've always stayed loyal to the green wave is the the uniform in the stadium the reason you go there no i mean so like back in the day this is the nerdiest thing ever back in the day like they had that central port in new orleans but they were like one of the worst teams in division one so like i would always go with them to kind of do a a difficult rebuild that was possible i'd move them back into the sec and things like that but i've actually got them in the big 12 now i think that would make more sense with how the conferences are aligned. It's conference okay. is kind of an ambiguous term in college football right now. Yeah. I'm trying to lick my wounds after a 49 14 drubbing by Michigan to uh Oof. to get back into it after they beat my Northwestern Wildcats. So we're we're taking some time evaluating the program. Uh flush it. You know, we're on to next week. We're on to Illinois, I think we're going to figure this thing out and write the ship. So okay. uh, we're locked in. We might not be as fun as Tulane, but we're trying to figure things out here up at Evanston as well. For today, we're going to talk about week zero, talk about the best bets across week zero, and get Austin's read on the futures market as well before this season gets underway. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. A couple more shows coming up later on this week. It's NASCAR in Daytona on Saturday night. That'll be a fun one. We'll talk about some bets that I like there on Thursday. Then on Friday, Raheem Palmer of the Ringer will swing by and talk about some futures he likes in the NFL. To get those shows as they are posted, make sure you are subscribed to the, the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. And don't forget, these shows also go up on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV+. Plus. If you like what you hear over on the FanDuel YouTube page, leave us a thumbs up to get FanDuel TV+. Plus. Go to FanDuel.com slash watch and log in with your FanDuel account. You can watch Up and Adams. You can watch Covering the Spread, Heat Check, Solo Shot, uh, The Ringer as well, all in the same place. So go to FanDuel.com slash watch or download the FanDuel TV Plus app on your Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Roku device. Football is back and there's no better place to get in on the NFL action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, all customers can bet $5 and get a three week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. Plus with FanDuel, you don't even have to leave the app to access real-time stats and data to help you make even more winning bets. Download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Must be 21 plus and present in select states or 18 plus and present in DC. Offer ends 9 24 after three week free trial, the full price of NFL Sunday ticket will be automatically charged seasonally. Cancel any time. No refunds, terms, restrictions, and embargoes apply. YouTube TV base plan required to watch YouTube TV. Redemption requires a Google account and current form of payment. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com. 
and or visit fanduel.com slash RG. Call 1 888 789 7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut 1 809 with it in Indiana. Visit MD Gambling Health at Oregon, Maryland. Hope is here. Visit Gambling Healthline MA.org or Call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Done that read about three times. Every time my my Andrew, my Pixel picks up on when I say Google and it like reacts like, hey, do you want something? No, I don't. I'm reading an ad. But anyway, <laughs> I'm excited to go through that 16,000 times the next month as well. Okay, <laughs> let's talk some college football now, Austin. We've had you on to talk. Hockey, basketball, we've had you on to talk UFC a bunch, a lot of stuff. I don't think we've had you on to talk college football before. So let's hear what your process looks like when it comes to betting college football. You know the funniest part about talking college football in here? I've done it twice, but you weren't here either time. When I was filling in for you, I did a couple of episodes. Oh, you're right. like, so you were on vacation. Hosting. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. You, you were on vacation. I was hosting. So it okay. makes sense. That checks out with Jim's memory, guys, that um, he, he, he was uh, off doing important stuff. But I um, might have been in the DR getting COVID, so I don't know how important oof. it actually was. Yeah, I remember that. Um, but anyway, um, back to my college football betting process. I really wish I had a super fancy predictive model for college football like I do for UFC. It would make things a lot easier, but I guess how I would describe my college football betting process is I try to make educated decisions in smaller quantities, knowing I'm probably not going to beat the books. I look a lot at ESPN's SP plus like schedule adjusted efficiency ratings to get an idea of which schools excel on which side of the ball, um, especially special teams. If you're betting group of five games and things like that, special teams can be a killer in terms of like point spreads and totals. Um, I check analytical projection models like number fire, Massey ratings, D ratings. Some of them are, get very wrong with injuries or quarterback changes, but it's good to have. And then I lean into my strengths, which is my super sheets. I collect target share data, rush share data. I collect efficiency as far as particular players for old school DFS and now betting props if I do that. But it helps me know specific run pass matchups. Um, if there's an elite quarterback, a dual threat, this team struggles against dual threat quarterbacks. Some of that stuff can translate to a team level, but none of this is like definitive. So I try to remind myself, make good choices. And these things that I'm doing are all things that a casual better can do too. And you can make yourself a more informed better to make decisions on games you want to bet. And I believe every model you mentioned there is publicly available too. So like you can perfect. use a wisdom of the crowd type approach, even if you don't have, you know, I mean, like you have to pay for ESPN plus for SB plus, but like, that's not that much. If you've got, like, I think if you have like, I think you have Disney plus, you might get access to ESPN plus. I might be completely off base there, but like you get access to these things for free. So you don't need to have, like Austin said, some sophisticated model. You can use wisdom of the crowds and pool the knowledge of smart people and see where they're seeing value. Now you mentioned your super sheet. You're going to be doing our college football props column throughout this fall, every Friday. So let's talk some futures. Let's talk about the Heisman award where there really isn't a, a runaway guy entering this year. Dylan Gabriel, the favorite at seven to one, but Honestly, it's pretty wide open. So looking at the Heisman market, Austin, any values you think are worth snagging there before the season? Yeah, and I just wanted to take a strategy to this market because like you said, it is very wide open. We've got a collection of quarterbacks. Actually, overwhelmingly, the market's telling you this is likely going to be an SEC quarterback. Five of the top seven guys fit that category. And then the exceptions are Big Ten favorites, Dylan Gabriel, Will Howard, um, this overwhelmingly has been a quarterback award there. Um, there have only been three running backs that have won it since 2005. Devonte Smith was a wide out in 2020 that won it. So going off the board from that position, you have to make a decision while you're doing that. But what I specifically wanted to target is I think the most wide open surprise appearance type of bit major conference that we have is the big 12. We don't really know which team's going to emerge out of the big 12. It's kind of the unknown point for both betting the conference as well as I wanted to take that approach to the Heisman market where if the SEC cannibalizes itself, if Will Howard and Dylan Gabriel on run first teams with a lot of surrounding talent, maybe don't flash out to have some sort of Heisman level performance, where could someone come out of nowhere? 
I think there are a couple guys in the Big 12 that I looked at that if they were to win it, it would be because of their offensive output. And it would be a little bit like how Robert Griffin III won the Heisman Trophy at Baylor. He was the do-it-all engine on that team that way over-performed. So I took a couple of long-shot darts here. The first one was Jalen Daniels from Kansas. He's 31-1. to Kansas is a basketball school, but they could do real damage in the Big 12 if Daniels can just stay healthy. He missed four games in 2022 missed 10 in 2023 but when he's on the field he's been dynamic 8.4 yards per pass attempt 6.7 yards per rush attempt in Lance Leopold's quick up-tempo offense it's exactly what you want for counting stats and they have minimal skill talent around him and the defense stinks so if Kansas is good if Kansas can make the big 12 title game it'll probably be Daniels doing it as he did two years ago 10 of the last 12 Heisman quarterbacks posted at least 350 rushing yards. So a thing to keep in mind, if you like a quarterback, you probably want him to move a little bit. Quinn Ewers, Garrett Nussmeyer, Dylan Gabriel at the top kind of pocket guys. So I think for that perspective, Daniels checks a lot of boxes for me as a team that could potentially come out of nowhere. Okay, so Jalen Daniels, the first one again, 30 to one at FanDuel Sportsbook. We'll see what Kansas can do this year. Who is the second Big 12 person you have your eye on? So I just said this award trends toward uh, quarterbacks, but if there is a running back that is going to break through, and again, we've only had three since Reggie Bush in 2005, I think Ollie Gordon from Oklahoma State is the guy that could, you're scrolling up, you're going to have to scroll down. Ollie wow. Gordon, I, I figured based on what he did last year, I'd have to scroll up for Ollie Gordon, but yeah, he's 75, I, dang. <laughs> and I think a little bit of that is because this has been a quarterback only award. Sure. I don't think it's as conclusive as maybe the NFL MVP is, and you won't find a team on offense that relies more on their particular running back. So if they're going to make the big 12 title game or the college football playoff, it's going to be because Ollie Gordon was awesome. He had a 76 6.3% rush share, 10.3% target share for 29.3 total opportunities per game last year in the last eight games for Oklahoma State. Similar quarterback play and perimeter talent for them this year. And we saw it against Texas in the Big 12 title game, how quickly Ollie can become um, not a factor in the game because Oklahoma State falls way behind. But I think the biggest thing is with Texas and Oklahoma gone, easier schedule for him. The Big 12 now only has one team that was top 35 in rushing yards per attempt allowed. That was Utah. They get them in September. He finishes his last six games with five teams that were outside the top 25 in that, or top 75 in that stat. So a lot of bad rush defenses to close, including my alumni, the Colorado Buffaloes, in the final regular season game. So a lot can happen down the stretch for Gordon as you're making a statement if Oklahoma State's in contention to win the Big 12. I think crazier things have happened, and Gordon has the workload that that could potentially do it. And the talent, too, for sure. Absolutely. So Ollie Gordon, 75-1, to 1, where you're looking at there. The other one, again, Jalen Daniels, 30-1, to 1, despite the fact you're a Colorado guy. Uh, no interest in Travis Hunter or Shadur Sanders? So I think I'd probably look towards Shadur Sanders, but but it is going to be an uphill climb for Colorado to actually yeah. win enough games for it to matter. Yeah. I, I think you do want to look toward the top of the Big 12. Cam Rising from Utah is another name that fits the same process. Dual threat guy. I, I think Rising's odds are a little bit short, and Utah really spreads it around. They'll run the ball quite a bit. They don't play at a very fast tempo. The thing that I like about Kansas and Oklahoma State is they can score a ton of points, and if they yeah. do, it's through those two guys. Okay. So makes sense. I agree with you on the Colorado stuff. It, that's a <laughs> bit of a leap for them to win the Heisman. Yeah. Hunter's interesting, but uh, 60 to one, but I think that the Daniels won 30 to one and Ollie Gordon 75, uh, two solid bets there. What about team level futures? Anything to stand out to you entering the season? Yeah, so I actually gave these out when I filled in for you in March, but I, I did want to go over them again because they're kind of the two teams I've said these are my teams this year that I think are going to be better than expectation. The first is in the ACC. I'm looking at Clemson, and not a lot of people are looking at Clemson this year. Dabo Swinney kind of outdated. He doesn't use the transfer portal. They haven't evolved. But the thing about Dabo, he's put together six straight top 10 recruiting classes the old-fashioned way. So this Clemson team still has a ton of talent. They were top, they were 12th in opponent yards per play last year on defense. It was just kind of a clunky fit on the offensive side of the ball, but it, it's really hard to understand where it went wrong. Cade Klubnick, top co overall quarterback out of high school, has improved weaponry. Another year for his kind of younger perimeter talent to take a leap in that regard. And then Phil Moffa is going to get the full reins in the backfield after uh, Will Shipley left for the NFL. 5.4 yards per carry. So I think this Clemson offense is going to be a lot better this year than it was last year. We know the defense is good. I'm looking at them to win at least 10 games. So if you go to X plus wins in FanDuel's market, you can get an alternate from their win total, which is eight and a half. 
I like a proverbial nine and a half here at plus 140. And then I also like them to win the ACC at plus 360, which kind of goes hand in hand with their win total. When you look at their wins and their schedule, they start with Georgia. That's not great. I think that automatic loss is baked into their line, if you will. At Florida State, it's a tough one. We'll talk about Florida State since they're taking play, taking the field here in week zero. Other than that, though, NC State at home is their only team that is either a, not a group of five school or projected for at least eight wins on FanDuel Sportsbook. So I think it really swings in that NC State game. It's at home. I really do believe Dabo and company can take care of that. And really, they'll be jockeying with Florida State for a position in the ACC championship. You kind of see that and how that lays out. We'll talk about why I'm not as high on Florida State as maybe some other people are. So I'm kind of going with Old Reliable and Clemson. Okay, Clemson plus 360 to win the ACC. Clemson 10 plus wins, plus 140 at FanDuel Sportsbook. If you're picking one of those two markets, what's your preferred one here? I think I prefer the 10 plus wins market of just simply because if they end up dropping that Florida State game, the tiebreaker may not work their way to make it into the ACC championship game. They might make the college football playoff as an at large and not make their own conference title game. It's very possible with how this specific conference is set up, given they have to run through Florida State in their own side of the bracket. Okay, so targeting Clemson in both those markets here. Any other teams you've got your eye on for this year? Yeah, so then I'm going to flip over to the Big Ten. And it's a little surprising to me that how the win total versus winning the conference plays out with this team in the Big Ten. I like Penn State, which has been perilous the last few years to say because Ohio State or Michigan always seems to get in the way. They have that high-profile game. They haven't quite performed in it. And the interesting part is that I'm even skeptical skeptical of Drew Aller, their quarterback, as an NFL prospect. I don't really see the juice when I watch him. But the new Big Ten is a little bit more wide open. These Pac-12 Pac teams coming in, Washington, USC, Oregon, all down NFL quarterbacks, even though Oregon did a nice job replacing theirs in the transfer portal. We know Michigan has lost Jim Harbaugh. They've tumbled behind Penn State here. And Ohio State's really the tough one. They added Will Howard, Quinshawn Judkins, insane talent on defense. There is huge juice on them to win at least 10 games. It's minus 162 on FanDuel, but I think it's justified because there is one team on their entire schedule projected for over eight and a half wins at FanDuel. It is Ohio State, but they get that game at home, some uncertainty with these new pieces, and I think if they can win that particular game, if they can finally get past OSU, then it's smooth sailing to at least an 11-1, 12-0 record and a, and a spot in the Big Ten title game with the way their divisions work up. They'll play a Big, win, Big Ten West team that's probably Oregon at the end of the day. But I love this team, and they're returning a ton of their top talent. Aller at quarterback is returning. Catron Allen and Nick Singleton at running back. And then last year, they were second in defensive yards per play. James Franklin is always reliable on that side of the ball. I think they've got a favorable schedule. I think they waited out C.J. Stroud. They waited out J.J. McCarthy. I think this is Penn State's year to finally bust through. Okay, they are plus 450 right now to win the Big Ten. We've been waiting on Penn State for a very long time, trying to figure out a quarterback. Disappointing last year, but there was a lot of hype around Aller when he came up, uh, when he was mm -hmm. first recruited. So he was kind of like the, the hope that Penn State fans had. Maybe mm -hmm. you can finally tap into that for this year. So looking at Penn State, plus 450 to win the Big Ten this year. All right, Austin, let's shift our focus now and talk about week zero and the specific games for this week. And it begins out in Dublin. I tried to wear my uh, Dublin specific hat for today, but I, I realized the flap ribs just don't work for me. So uh, that one got cast aside. We decided to go with the traditional Northwestern hat instead. For that Dublin game, Florida State favored by 11 and a half, taking on Georgia Tech. The total in that game is 55 and a half. You talked a bit about Florida State earlier on as it relates to Clemson. So pretty big favorites here. What's your view of this double game between Florida State and Georgia Tech? Right. Um, and so when I look at Florida State, this can happen where these teams that have incredible talent on them, Florida State is one of them with another top 12 recruiting class this year. I'm incredibly skeptical of them returning last year's success because there's a very clear demarcation with this Florida State program where they've always had the talent. But after Jameis Winston and until Jordan Travis broke out, it was a disaster. They were barely struggling to make bowl games five and six or five and seven, six and six. There is that clear demarcation point and how they answered the bell after Jordan Travis's injury last year didn't make me feel better. They had one offensive touchdown in both the ACC championship and we saw how I know the context of a lot of their guys had opted out of the Orange Bowl, but they got absolutely smacked by Georgia, and that doesn't create the best momentum going into this year. And now they're turning to DJ Uyagalule, who's a veteran guy who has kind of sort of 
cratered the offense in his last two stops. Clemson was 106th and 61st in passing yards per attempt in the two years that they had him there. Oregon State was 51st in passing yards per game last year, where they leaned more on the run than Damian Martinez. They had 10 NFL draftees off this team, a um, couple of really outstanding defenders uh, it, that went in early in the NFL draft. I don't know if the defense is going to be quite as strong this year. And then Uy Ugalale is a guy that I just generally, I think I, the book is out on him, and I've seen enough to a point where I don't think he's going to be a dynamic difference maker. So I, that's why I'm down on them in the futures market, and I think they may be a little overvalued to lay an 11.5 to a Georgia Tech team that might be better than we think this year. Now, the defensive side of the ball was a struggle for Georgia Tech last year. They were 118th in defensive yards per play. I think DJ Uli Ugale with a slow pace, if they can get a key turnover or two, Georgia Tech's going to be able to score on a lot of folks. There's a decent total in this game. Haynes King, 50th ranked passer by Pro Football Focus last year, 143 rating, six rushing yards per attempt. So he's kind of a dual threat guy that can make things up off script if Florida State's um, not able to, if Florida State's able to contain the run for Georgia Tech. I like them plus 11 and a half here in this spot against Florida State, where I think it's a low scoring, uglier game. First game in the system for Uli Ugalule, and Georgia Tech is able to keep things tight with the veteran, and in my opinion, better quarterback. Okay, so we're taking Georgia Tech plus 11 and a half in the Dublin game. High total in that game, 55 and a half, but Austin is saying that uh, the Georgia Tech offense should be able to do some stuff here against the Florida State defense that has lost a lot of talent. And we're skeptical of DJ Uyongalele after what's happened for him in his past two stops. So like in Georgia Tech in game number one of the year. Any other week zero bets for you, Austin? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to the high profile showdown between the Montana State Bobcats and the New Mexico Lobos. So, uh, who wouldn't look at this game and circle it as game of the week? It is rare that you see an FCS school, a double digit favorite, but I'd be surprised if New Mexico couldn't hang a little bit here. They were actually 44th in offensive yards per play. Why did they go 4-8 and eight last year? Because they were the second worst team in the country on the defensive side in that category. I think it could put them in a position where Bronco Mendenhall, yes, that Bronco Mendenhall, who is now in charge of the New Mexico program, if he's trailing a little bit, he's a guy that likes to run the ball, play a slower pace, but if Montana State is scoring in bunches. New Mexico might have to play a little faster. They were just 108th in seconds per play, even though they had an efficient offense. New Mexico went 9-3 and to the over last year in a spot where they're potentially trailing an FCS team, and that's an embarrassing stain that you really don't want on your resume as a coach. I think there will be points in this game. New Mexico's Devin Dampier, dual threat guy, taking on an FCS school. I don't want to overthink it. I'm taking the over between New Mexico and Montana State. That total right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, 54 and a half over is minus 110 for Montana State taking on New Mexico. Good offense, bad defense, desperation spot. That could be a lot of fun and honestly, a good game to watch. I know you kind of made light of it, but like, you know, it could be kind of fun, especially Absolutely. as you come off of that uh, Dublin game as well. This is the second game of the year. Okay, so Austin for week zero is liking New Mexico, Montana State over 54 and a half, minus 110, and liking Georgia Tech plus 11 and a half as they take on Florida State in the opener. That is all we have here for today, breaking down week zero on covering the spread. Austin, want to give you a big thank you once again for swinging, swinging by, breaking down your thoughts on week zero, and looking forward to talking to you again soon here back on the show once again. Sounds good, Jim. I'll see you soon, man. All right, you find Austin on X at Swain 3 I am on X at Jim Sonis. You can find FanDuel Research on X at FanDuel Research. Don't forget the show is up on the Covering the Spread podcast feed, the FanDuel YouTube page, and FanDuel TV+. Plus. want to thank you all for tuning in for today. We'll talk to you again Thursday, talking NASCAR in Daytona. This has been Covering the Spread, a FanDuel Research podcast. 